Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Okay, so for this video, okay, I'm going to do a hands-on, okay, a lab demo. How can we actually conduct the radiate immunity test and management? Okay, so this video, I'm going to do the RI according to this IEC EN61000-4-3. Okay, so basically, this is the standard that I'm going to do for this demo on radiate immunity. This will be the part 66 series discussion on EMC. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are also welcome to ask me your question through the comment. Okay, before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much. Let's continue the discussion on the hands-on on radiate immunity. Okay, so this step here, it shows all the equipment for radiate immunity. Okay, right on top is actually the signal generator. Okay, so signal generator actually generate a signal with very low phase noise and very stable frequency. Okay, so next will be the array of amplifier. Okay, you can see that over here we actually have four sets of amplifier. Okay, this is because there is not possible to have just one amplifier to cater the whole frequency spectrum for radiate immunity. Okay, for example, for radiate immunity, the frequency that start will be from 30 MHz all the way to 6 GHz. It is almost quite difficult to find one amplifier that can boost up the signal from 30 MHz all the way to 6 GHz. So therefore, we have different classes of amplifier. They actually operate at different frequency band. Okay, so basically in short over here, you can see that this is actually for the higher frequency and you can see the rest of them are actually for the lower set of frequency. Okay, so there are actually some components that I want to introduce. Okay, so this is actually the test setup for radiate immunity. Okay, the first item, you can see that this is actually the antenna mask. Okay, you can see that the antenna, which is green in color, they actually mount onto the antenna mask. Okay, for example, okay, what height to set? Okay, for example, when you actually did the fuel uniformity at 1.5 meter, for example, for this case here. Okay, so we actually do the fuel uniformity at the height of 1.5 meter. So thereafter, we need to set the antenna at 1.5 meter. Okay, so this is the first item. The next item that I'm going to introduce will be the CCTV, which is on the top left. Okay, so you can actually see that this is actually a CCTV. Okay, so what role does a CCTV play? Okay, so what happened here is during the test, okay, so we actually observe the DOT through the CCTV. Okay, so basically the CCTV will monitor the status of the DOT and basically from the picture, we will be able to know whether the DOT still function or not. Okay, so next, okay, so this is actually the turntable. Okay, but during the whole process of the test of radiate immunity, the turntable will not turn at all. Okay, so you can see that the number actually indicate on the turntable. So for this case here, we actually face the zero degree towards the antenna. Okay, so right at the middle okay, of the turntable is actually the DUT. Okay, so we place the DUT at the center of the non-conductive table. We need to ensure okay, the DUT is at least 3 meter away from the antenna. Okay, so next, on the other corner here, this is actually a fuel probe. Okay, so what it actually do is basically, it actually measure the fuel strength. Okay, for example, okay, the electromagnetic wave that is actually released by the antenna, okay, basically they will be measured by this fuel probe and they will indicate uh, on the PC, what will be the fuel strength? Okay, so this is the setup for radiate immunity. 
this is the software aspect of radiant immunity. Okay, so you can see that there are actually two set of radiant immunity tests. Okay, so this test we will be focusing so called the below three gigahertz. Okay, so what I need to do is I mouse over. Okay, I click this RI test below three gigahertz. Okay, you can see that the software is already launched. Okay, so we come to this page here. So when we actually want to do the radiate immunity, okay, we just do the immunity measurement. We just click this immunity measurement. Okay, so these are the few selection of different template. Okay, for this case here, we are doing uh, 80 meg all the way to 3 gigahertz with 10 volt per meter. So I just select this. Okay, so you can see that this is actually the reference point okay, having the view strength at 10 volt per meter okay so what does this diagram show it to you you can see that at the x axis is actually the frequency okay, versus the y okay, which is the view strength and on the other side is the power okay so we need to ensure another thing okay we need to go to the setting Okay, so we need to turn on the level monitoring. Okay, so we will be putting the fuel probe inside the chamber. So we need to so-called enable this in order to see the reading of the fuel strength inside the chamber. Okay, so after we've done this, we just need to click OK. So now we are ready to start the test. Okay, so let's start the test. Okay, so all the initiation all done by the system on their own. Okay, so we need to, for example, for this case here, for example, if let's say we are testing the antenna at a horizontal position, the frequency that we are going to test for this time round will be from 80 to 3 gigahertz. Okay, the basing of the DOT is at zero. So once we have done all this, we just need to click measure. Okay, so again, they will do all the so-called setting. Okay, so we have changed the antenna. So I just need to click OK. Okay, so this one we also done. So I just click OK. Okay, so now you can see that the antenna actually changed to a horizontal priority. Okay, so let's wait a while for the rest of the test. So make sure that we set the turntable to zero degree. We done. So just click OK. Okay, so now you can see that the test started. Okay, so let's wait a while and let me explain. Okay, so you can see that a few indicative start to have a so-called outcome on the measurement so the green color is actually the fuel strength okay remember earlier on we are actually setting a 10 volt per meter so this is actually the reference line you can see that the fuel strength is actually above 10 volt per meter okay so this is actually the fuel strength on the purple line this is actually the forward power by the amplifier Okay, so you can see that this is the power from the amplifier. For example, over here, roughly, okay, the power is about, let's say, close to 75 watts here, okay, from the amplifier, which means that the amplifier actually generate about 75 watts, okay, in order to achieve this amount of fuel strength here. Okay, so basically, this is the setup for radiant immunity. Okay, it will take some time for all the tests to be finished, okay, but I will skip this part for now. Thanks. Okay, so this is actually the view from CCTV. Okay, earlier on, I showed you that inside the chamber, there is actually a CCTV. Okay, so this is the antenna. Okay, make sure the antenna is at a height of 1.5 meter. Okay, so this is because, as I mentioned earlier on, the view uniformity we actually execute at 1.5 meter. So we need to calibrate everything as the same as the fuel uniformity setup. So therefore the antenna will be at 1.5 meter. Okay, so let's take a close look on the turntable. Okay, so let me just zoom into the turntable. Okay, so you can see that this little black item here, which is the DUT. Okay, so you can see that there is a red light. Okay, so just imagine now the antenna actually bombard a array of electromagnetic wave onto the DUT. So what we need to do is basically we observe the DUT okay, through this CCTV. For example, if let's say there is any fault, okay, the LED light will be blinking. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit more. So let's say if there is any fault, the LED light will be blinking. If it's remain on, okay, so it means that it's everything still as per normal. 
So what we need to do over here is we will be testing from 80 megahertz all the way to 3 gigahertz. So we just need to observe whether the DUT still can function in a satisfactory manner. Okay, so on the other side, you see that this is actually a fuel probe. Okay, so the fuel probe actually indicate the fuel strength inside the chamber. Okay, so basically, this is just a very good indicator to roughly show how much fuel strength will be super emit out by the antenna. Okay, so this is roughly all the test setup. So in short, okay, if the DUT is function okay, throughout the whole test, okay, we declare that we actually pass the radiant immunity test. If let's say the DUT cannot pass the test, then we need to do some troubleshooting onto the DUT and we need to go through this whole process again. Okay, so basically this is the test for the lower frequency of radiant immunity. Okay, so let me start by introduce some of the essential equipment inside the chamber when we actually do the radiant immunity. Okay, so firstly we have this which is the antenna mask. Okay, so you can see that the antenna is actually mounted onto the antenna mask. Okay, the second thing that I want to introduce is this is actually a turntable. Okay, but for radiant immunity, okay, the turntable will not turn at all. Okay, so they will be faced, for example, for this case here, they will just face at the zero degree. Okay, so if I have a DUT, okay, I need to place the DUT at the center of this non-conductive turntable here. Okay, so another component that I want to do a quick introduction is this. This is called a fuel probe meter. Okay, so this actually measure the fuel strength and they will refer back to the computer how much will be the fuel strength. Okay, so how does the process start? Okay, so the antenna actually will radiate the electromagnetic wave. Just imagine that the electromagnetic wave actually move towards you. So the electromagnetic wave is measured by the fuel probe and the fuel probe actually indicate the value okay, in the system to show that how much will be the fuel strength. Okay, so basically this is a simple setup for radiant immunity. Okay, so now let's come to the setup, okay, the software aspect to do the radiant immunity. Over here you can see that there are actually two set of radiant immunity tests. Okay, so now we are going to focus on the higher frequency. So I'm going to click on the above 3 gigahertz. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so now the software launch. Okay, so this is actually the setup page for the for the software. So I need to do the radiant immunity. So therefore, I just click on this immunity measurement. Okay, so once I click on the immunity measurement, uh, I will just select this tempo per meter. Okay, so once I select the tempo per meter, you can see that I actually have this reference line which is tempo per meter. Okay, so one thing that I need to include now is to have the fuel strength. Okay, so I have put a fuel probe inside the chamber. I need to monitor the fuel strength. So I just need to create the level monitor and I just enable the fuel strength. Okay, so basically this is one step I need to do. So once I done, I just click OK. So after all this, I'm ready to do the test. Okay, so now I will enable okay, to start the test. Okay, so now the test is running. Okay, so they are doing some initiation. Uh, okay, so over here you can see that the antenna I actually set in the horizontal. The test frequency is from 3 gig all the way to 6 gigahertz. Uh, the EUT basing is 0 degree. So once I've done this, I actually can click the word measure. Okay, so again they are doing some of the so-called setting. So I have changed the antenna, so I just click OK. So I will set the antenna base to this uh, specific position. So again, I have just need to click OK. Okay, so now you can see that the antenna actually turned into the horizontal polarization. Okay, so now after they do turn to the so-called horizontal polarization. Okay, so now if you want me to do a checking on the turn table, uh, I have set at zero degree. If you still recall, okay, so I, I have done. So I just click OK. Okay, so after all this, okay, so you can see that they do some uh, so-called setup here. Okay, I just want to quickly do an explanation on this table here. Okay, so this graph here, you can see that this X axis is a frequency. Okay, there are actually two axis for the Y. You will see this is actually a few strength. 
uh, on the other side is actually the power okay so let me explain what are uh, all these here okay you can see that this green color is actually the fuel strength okay so from the fuel strength this need to be achieved more than 10 volt per meter okay but if you still remember that the fuel uniformity it allows some points to be below the 10 volt per meter okay so but in short okay most of the time we need to ensure that the fuel strength is actually above the 10 volt per meter okay as for this purple line is actually the forward power of the amplifier okay so basically these are the power that actually deliver up by the amplifier in order for us to achieve the 10 volt per meter okay so let's move on to the next phase of video cctv okay you can see that this is actually the antenna Okay, so if let's say you do the fuel uniformity at 1.5 meter, you need to ensure that the antenna height is actually at 1.5 meter. Okay, so on the other side, this is actually a turntable. Okay, so let's zoom in okay, to see the DOT on the non-conductive table. Okay, so you can see that this is actually the DOT. Okay, I'm not sure whether you can see that there's a, actually a red LED here. Okay, so just imagine the electromagnetic wave is now bombard the DUT and what we need to observe is basically the the DUT will be able to operate in a satisfactory manner. For example, if let's say anything that is unusual, okay, you actually can see that the LED will start to blink. Okay, so basically in short, okay, what we need to do is basically we will monitor the DUT via CCTV Okay, to ensure that it is able to operate in a satisfactory manner okay, across the frequency from 3 gig all the way to 6 gig.